Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star, who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past. Let us pray that our God will continually bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. This is God's story, our story, and all of our lives are defined through it. Hear the creation account. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures. And let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds. Livestock and creeping things and beasts on the earth, each according to their kinds. And it was so. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heaven, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast on the earth that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. We sing together in the shattered bliss of Eden.
account of the flood. The Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of all the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. On that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. And rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons with them entered the ark. Shem, Ham, and Jepheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them. They and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was breath of life. And those that entered, male and female, went in as God had commanded them, and the Lord shut them in. The flood continued 40 days upon the earth. Eventually, Noah sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. The dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him any more. So Noah went out. And his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you. With every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth, as many as came out of the ark, it is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the cloud. And it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and all the earth. We sing. The account of the Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. 
Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and with your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night. And I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned to you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. At midnight... The Lord struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where someone was not dead. Then he summoned Moses and Aaron by night and said, Up, go out from among my people, both you and the people of Israel, and go, serve the Lord. As you have said, we sing together, not all the blood of beasts. Finally, Israel, delivered by their God and ours at the Red Sea. Pharaoh pursued Israel, and when Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. The people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward, lift up your staff, And stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, a wall to them on their right and on their left of water. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning, watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptians into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from before Israel. For the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. 
So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord, and in his servant Moses. We sing together the God of Abram praise. God of Abram praise who reigns Please rise. Dear friends in Christ, the Apostle Paul writes, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Living therefore in the promise and power of your baptism, I ask you again, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you oppose those powers that stand against the kingdom of God? Do you repent of the brokenness that necessitated your baptism? Do you believe in God the Father? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Is it your purpose to continue steadfast in this faith and in the promise God made to you in your baptism, to remain faithful as a member of Christ's holy church, to be diligent in the use of the means of grace and of prayer? 
the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. May the light of Christ, who is risen in glory from the dead, who resigns in the midst of the baptized, scatter the darkness of your hearts and minds. Beloved of the Lord, Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night. When Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave, how wonderful and beyond our knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night, when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away, it restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn, it casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. On this night, death is defeated, and so we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is Easter, and so we sing.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now it's time to decorate. We invite the congregation at this time to join in helping by grabbing flowers from the narthex and bringing them forward to the altar.
please stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we joyfully sing together this joyful Easter tide.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. But when we began, as we entered here tonight, we entered once more into Jesus' death because he was still dead. For three days, Jesus entered into and dwelled in that place that we fear the most. He rested in the clutches of our greatest enemy and God's. Three days in the tomb, the power of evil looked triumphant. That's how we started. And now those three days might cause confusion because Good Friday was only 24 hours ago. By our reckoning, that's only one day dead. We've already proclaimed he's risen. We aren't always tuned into the fact that Jesus wasn't speaking of days the way we do. A Jewish day is marked differently. Our day is understood sun up to sun up, dawn to dawn, 24 hours. A Jewish day is understood sun down to sun down, dusk to dusk. So Jesus died before sundown Friday. It's day one. He stayed fully and completely dead on the Sabbath, Saturday, day two. And sometime after sundown, on that third day, So we walked in in silence, because before sundown, for sure, the Son of God was still dead, but sometime on this sacred night, something stirs, and a holy heart beats but once. And that first heartbeat sent shockwaves backward. It went backward throughout time. Everything we just heard, Israel crossing the Red Sea, Israel waiting for the angel of death to pass over their blood-splattered houses. The shockwaves of that beat went back to Noah, riding out the chaos of the flood and the ark, all the way back even to the beginning, to before the beginning, creation, when God said everything was good. That first beat of the heart of Jesus covered all of history, but it also went forward to this night, some 2,000 years later, and that heartbeat has captured your life and mine and all the world in its power. Sometime after sundown, in the dark of night, the world changed, and that is why we gather tonight. That's why Easter Vigil is a special night, completely other, totally different from our festival Easter Sunday celebration tomorrow. Because tonight is still a mystery. Entered into in death, ending in life, And that mystery is why we call it a vigil. A vigil, technically in the dictionary, is a period of keeping awake during the time usually spent asleep, especially to keep watch or pray. So tonight we watch, we pray, we wait in holy anticipation for that heart to beat, for that stone to be rolled away before dawn. We watch, we wait, and we are confident in what happens this night. Now, that first Easter vigil, though, nobody then really had the same confidence that we do now. We heard this earlier in Holy Week. The disciples all fled. They were hiding in fear. The world had been turned upside down yesterday. God had flipped the script. The glory of the triumphal entry with their leader and would-be Messiah had flipped to grief and despair. They'd forgotten that Jesus had predicted all of this. They'd forgotten so that nobody expected what would happen after sundown. Except probably one woman. One woman knew what was coming. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 14. Right before the Passover and the betrayal and the crucifixion, Jesus is reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper. And a woman comes in with an alabaster jar of ointment, worth 300 denarii, it's a year's wages. And she broke it and poured it on his head, and people were indignant this could have been given to the poor. You might have heard this story before. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Do not trouble her. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. What Mark is telling us is that Jesus is saying that this woman, alone among all of his followers, believed him. Three times in Mark, chapters 8, 9, and 10, he said, I'm going to die, 
And after only three days, I will rise again. In other words, there won't be time to anoint my body. I won't be dead long enough. And this woman, it seems, believes him. Believes that he will die and rise, which is why she's anointing him beforehand. That makes sense of Jesus' words. That's why where the gospel is proclaimed, what she has done will be told in memory of her, because she believes him. I'm going to rise. This woman in Mark 14 with the expensive perfume, we could presume, is the only person of all the followers of Jesus 2,000 years ago who is waiting, keeping vigil on this holy Saturday, possibly with the same hope and confidence that we have. Because she believed his word and his promise. Our gathering here tonight is because we also believe his word. Jesus says, I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys to death and Hades. He did rise. We believe sometime this night the world changed forever. So we re-remember year after year, waiting and watching for Jesus to keep his word. To be the firstborn from the dead, his new creation springing out of this tomb that was formerly shut. And this vigil, this yearly vigil waiting for the fulfilling of God's promises, it also reminds us that we are awaiting people always. And not just on this night. Waiting and watching and praying is a life we've been baptized into. Now, sometimes we're waiting and watching for the same things, like tonight, for Jesus to rise after sundown, and yet sometimes we wait and watch for different things. Sometimes it's the same, we're all waiting and watching for the return of Jesus in this resurrected body, this reanimated blood still coursing through his veins, but sometimes we wait and watch for different things, that cosmic reversal what it promises will be a little bit different for each of us. Because each of our own hopes and fears through all of these years, they are particular often and personal. And we're waiting for God to do something. Our griefs, our pains, our hopes, our yearnings, the deaths that we want reversed, the beauty that we want magnified and perfected, they are all as individual as our fingerprints. And the guarantee for all of our hopeful or painful vigils is the end of this one. Because sometime tonight, after the sun goes down, the fabric of reality changes with a single beat of a heart that was previously dead. And all creation has been changed. Because of that beat of Christ's heart that echoes into history and into eternity, Through your baptisms, you are living forever. And everything that we're waiting for, all sin and evil, the sense of brokenness of our world, it will not last forever. All that hurts you or causes you grief or guilt has met its match, and all that is good and true and beautiful that surrounds us like these flowers we just carried in is because of this resurrection. But even then, it's still only a foretaste, a glimpse what God has in store when his heart, still and always beating, returns in glory. And we too will be raised like Jesus. It will be Easter every day, whether you count days as Jews or Americans. Every day will be Easter. Because of his heart, that beats always for you, for the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We gather the tithes and thank offerings of God's people at this time.
Please stand as you are able. As we gather on this day of commemoration and celebration, let us pause to reflect upon our need for deliverance and forgiveness. Let us confess before God all that draws us away from honoring him and serving our neighbor. O oh, most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am rightly ashamed. But some of my sin is known only to you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, who by his suffering and death has atoned for all sin, I ask you to forgive me, deliver me from my guilt, and raise me up to newness of life in Christ Jesus my Lord, that I might live in peace and serve you in righteousness. Amen. Upon hearing this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Deliverance awaits, as it did for Noah and the Israelites at the hand of Pharaoh. Deliverance, mercy, forgiveness, and life everlasting awaits us who believe at this, the Lord's table. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially, are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord Jesus Christ, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. And now may this salutary gift, the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you from this day forward, even to life everlasting. Depart now in peace, filled with great joy, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that on this day of resurrection, you give us the true body and blood of our living Savior, who is no longer in the tomb. Having been forgiven, strengthen us to share our living Savior with our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of his eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which, was, that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.